Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity may contain explicit and questionable content. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual podcaster and are not based on the advice of a licensed psychologist, therapist, or a psychiatrist. Listener discretion is strongly recommended. People's lives follow many different paths, with twists and turns and choices never planned nor expected. In life, temptation, anger, depression, and loneliness can lead a good person to a mistake that they just can't take back. When they are facing judgment and isolation, a person can feel very alone. In this podcast, you will hear stories of women who have chosen to cheat on their spouses or partners. Hear their stories. This is Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity. Hello and welcome to another episode of Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity. My name is Rebecca. If this is your first time listening, welcome. Today we have a new story from Jay. She just wanted to go by the letter J. And it is a little longer than usual, but not quite long enough to run into two episodes. So we are going to go ahead and just get started right now. Today's episode does discuss child sexual abuse. Please be advised. A little about myself. I grew up in a broken family. My mom and dad never officially divorced, but they were legally separated. My dad was physically, mentally, sexually, and emotionally abusive towards my mom, whether it be in front of us or behind closed doors. So my understanding of relationships was screwed up from a very early age. I was very close to my brother growing up, as I was the youngest, and I am sure he felt obligated to protect me. Both of my parents were severe alcoholics, so I know my brother tried to shield me from all of that. I wanted to be a counselor from a very young age. I was always told I had such an insight to life at such an early age. I believe this to be that I am an empath. My dad was not really involved with my life much as I was growing up, so I sought out that attention from an early age. I lost my virginity when I was 14, and when my mom found out, she called the cops on me, which is ironic, because when I was 7 I was raped, and my mom was not around, so an employee at a gas station near our apartment called the police on my behalf. But, I was definitely very promiscuous growing up and into my young adult years. I never had a boyfriend, just lots of friends with benefits. I got into drugs, meth, and that fueled the promiscuous life even more. I have never been committed to just one person before. I actually met my boyfriend slash fiance through my brother when I was 24. He was apparently a roommate of my brother's, but my brother never let me meet any of his friends, but he obviously thought he saw a connection between Kay and I. So, shortly after I met him, the first time Kay called me and asked if I wanted to go to the casino. I was totally down as I had not been out with a man for over three years. We went and I had a good time. He had a friend with him, so I wasn't sure if he was interested in me in that way. But anyway, after we left the casino, we went back to his friend's place for a while. We eventually left, and we parked in a parking lot and talked until the sun came up. He was pretty cool. I was giving off major vibes that I was into him, but he was a gentleman and didn't try anything. We started dating, and we had major sexual chemistry between us. Yet, I was so unsure of things because he was so different than any previous guy. I kept pushing him away. To my surprise, he knew I was broken, and he was willing to stick by me until I started letting down my wall and letting him in. He was unlike any man I had been with before. He cared about me and my pleasure and my feelings, etc. We moved in together, and then I got to know him very well. 
He did a few super shady things in our relationship that left me feeling very insecure in myself and our relationship, but I moved on and forgave him. He also had a pretty serious gambling addiction and had a hard time keeping a job. I got pregnant about four months into our relationship and we were super happy. After our son was born is when the shady things happened. The first being there was a female that he talked to and was friends with, which I had no problem with until I saw a text from her around Valentine's Day saying, Happy Valentine's, baby. Now granted, our son was born on Valentine's Day, but that is not how I read her text. It was not a congratulatory text, but more of a statement in my opinion. I told him I would prefer if he stopped talking to her, as this was not the only incident, but one of many. He said he would. One night I looked at his phone and noticed all these messages from some guy I had never heard of. So I looked at the number and it was her. He had just changed her name to a dude's name. I was hurt he lied and basically thought I was stupid. He had messaged our neighbor a few inappropriate texts about her looking good and said it was just to make her feel better because she was going through a breakup, which would have been fine had he also been complimenting me, but he wasn't. I had gained a lot of weight with our son, and I had very poor self-esteem and poor self-image. So it hurt even worse that he was noticing other females and not me. He had bought me a promise ring after these two incidents, and he woke me up and gave it to me like at 2 a.m. The very next day after work, which was his payday, he decided to stop at the casino and gambled his entire check. We had a newborn baby, and we needed diapers, formula, etc., so I returned my ring. It absolutely broke my heart. He never replaced that ring, nor was he very remorseful for this. Despite all these things, I continued on and we moved to a new place. And that's when he was having issues with keeping a job and we didn't have a car or any money. And I was getting really irritated with him being home all day, but didn't help me around the house, etc. I tried to break it off with him numerous times, but he would throw the I'm going to kill myself card every time. He would start crying and snot was pouring out of his nose. I can't stand to see people that are upset, especially because of me. So I always stayed even though I was unhappy. I remembered that his two previous relationships before ended because they had cheated on him. So I had thought... We had a neighbor who was a good friend of ours. His brother had just broken up with his wife. She had kicked him out and so he stayed with his sister for a few weeks until he could make it out of town to live with his dad. His sister asked if we could smoke some pot with him to help him relax a bit and deal with everything that was going on. We said sure and that is how I met my affair partner. We hung out a few times, and then he asked if one of us could give him a ride. Well, Kay didn't want to, but said I could, and so I gave him a ride, and my affair partner commented on how beautiful I was, and wondered why I was with a guy like Kay. He saw how unhappy I was, and one thing led to another, and I ended up getting physical with my affair partner immediately. I would even say during the act that I felt sick to my stomach. I literally threw up after because I couldn't believe that I did what I had just done. I was disgusted with myself because I love Kay very much and didn't want to hurt him. But I felt stuck. Fast forward and my affair continued for about two months or so. It was a long-distance affair because my affair partner moved two and a half hours away. Kay didn't find out about it until, of all days, Valentine's Day. Like I mentioned before, it's also our son's birthday. He was hurt, and I could see it on his face. 
I could tell I took something from him that day, and I felt terrible, but not terrible enough to stop seeing my affair partner. However, this would be the last time I would see him. To my discovery, my affair partner had paranoid schizophrenia, and he had pulled a knife on me at night. It was pitch black, and I could not see anything. He just kept saying the voices were telling him to do this, and so I immediately went into fight-or-flight mode, and I did whatever I could to calm him down and to get him to give me the knife. I was so scared, and during that time, my life literally was flashing before my eyes. The only people that were in my flash were Kay and my children. I knew that I was making a huge mistake, and so I ended it with the affair partner, and I went home. Kay had time to think about things and decided that he wanted to try and work things out. He asked me to contact the affair partner and tell him it was over and to block him, etc. And I did immediately. We moved forward and things were rocky. I was truly remorseful for what I had done and for the pain I had caused him. I apologized to him for what seemed like daily, but especially on Valentine's Day and his birthday. I would buy him a random card telling him how much I loved him, etc. He had also been working on a lot of changes with things that I had said made me so unhappy. It was a different kind of unhappy now, though, because he never really started to trust me or even let me earn trust back. He accused me of sleeping with everyone, and I wasn't. I had done a couple of, I guess you could say, questionable things over the next few years, but never cheated on him again. I put that on everything. So fast forward like five or six years, and we are still together and doing okay. I found out I was pregnant and we welcomed our third baby into the world. Shortly after he was born, Kay started to say things like he wanted a DNA test even though our son looked identical to his older brother and he looks just like his dad. I found out I was pregnant again just four months after I had our son, so we welcomed a baby girl into the world. At this point, we were doing better, and I didn't think he was unhappy or any more unhappy than he was a few years prior. On an Easter morning at 6.30 a.m., he starts getting ready to go to work with a friend of ours. He was brushing his teeth and putting on clothes that he would normally wear to work. He even put on cologne, so I was immediately suspicious. As soon as he left, I hopped on our computer he had left his messenger open. I saw that he had been chatting it up with this nasty bitch from his past. She used to date a friend of his. He was making all sorts of sexual innuendos at her, and she knew he had a girlfriend and kids, and yet she told him he could park in her garage so that I couldn't see if he was there, etc. That is where he was going that morning, and I immediately started blowing up his phone until he finally answered. I told him I knew where he was and what he was doing. I don't know if he believed me, but it doesn't matter in the end. His intentions were to go there for more than just talking to a friend. I told him that I needed him to stop talking to her. At first, he refused, but after a month, I gave him an ultimatum to continue talking to her and we leave, or he can have his family. He chose us and stopped talking to her, blocked her, etc. A couple more years go by, and our youngest is now four years old. Kay and I were better than we had been in a while, or so I thought... We were not having as much sex as he would have liked, but I had lost my sex drive since having our last baby and afterwards was diagnosed with diabetes. I was prescribed a few different meds and I didn't know at the time one of those meds affected my drive. I still had sex with him anytime he initiated, but I wasn't initiating it at all. He started calling me his roommate and such, so I tried to be a little more attentive to him. 
Mind you, during this time, he never made me feel or would tell me that I was beautiful like he used to. He completely made me feel like sex was just another chore, but he didn't ever tell me that he was unhappy. We took our first family vacation after being together for 14 years and we had a great time. That was in April of 2021. They were great memories. May 30th is his birthday, but I began to notice about the 27th of the month, he started acting funny again. That is when my world came crashing down. He started an affair with this nasty ass cum dumpster whore who was just nasty. She isn't pretty. She wasn't anything to be proud of. I mean, she had nine kids by eight different baby daddies, and she had only custody of two of them. She's an alcoholic, had biracial children, which is everything he cannot stand in a female. Not that there's anything wrong with mixed kids. It's just not his preference to date outside your race. He has known this nasty bitch longer than he's known me. She was just at our house that prior December, and that is when I met her. She also met our kids, so she was well aware he was taken. She is a known, proud-to-be homewrecker, and she finds this to be a challenge or a game. One day, I found a bedroom set that we planned to get. He was supposed to come home and help me go back and pick it up. I received a text about an hour before this was supposed to happen saying that he was sorry, but he would be working late and couldn't get away. So I went and picked it up myself. Hours went by and I tried to message him wanting to find out when he would be home. He said in about an hour. An hour comes and goes and then a few more passed and he still wasn't home. At this point, I was getting worried. So, I decided to call his boss. I had learned that they had all left at 5, but Kay volunteered to go back and finish up the job. His boss said it wasn't necessary, but gave him the keys to the place. I drove by the job site and nothing. I drove by casinos and nothing. I was freaking out because by this time his phone was going straight to voicemail. His boss was actually driving around looking for him too, but had no luck. Finally, a little before 2 a.m., he texted me and said yes, he was fine, and that he had gone to the casino, and also that he had almost lost all of our money, but he had won it back at the end. I asked him where he was, and he said at a gas station, and that he was scared to come home. I can kind of see his point, but not really, because he didn't lose any money. I told him, come home, and he did. The next morning, I received a text from him saying he was no longer happy, and he didn't think he would ever be, and that we needed to end things. My reply was simply, who is she? I knew that he only acted this way or said these things when a female had entered his life. He said no one, but I knew better. He still came home that night, and when he went to sleep, I took his phone and noticed he had changed his passcode. I immediately knew that he was up to no good. Luckily, or maybe unluckily for me, he still had his fingerprint lock on it, so I took his finger and unlocked his phone. I opened his messages and holy fuck, that is the day my entire world came crashing down. He had so many messages and calls with this bitch that I couldn't even get through two of the messages before I was seeing red. I started punching him in the sleep and he woke up saying, what, what, I haven't done anything wrong. I said, really? His immediate concern at that moment was, where was his phone? Give me my phone, etc. I told him no, that I wanted to read the messages and he said no. I asked who she was and he said no one and that I didn't need to worry because he was done talking to her and blah, blah, blah. I didn't read any more of the messages because I didn't want to at that time. 
His birthday was just a couple of days away, and the night before his birthday, he texted our son, saying he was going to the hardware store and that he would be home in an hour. I knew there was no need for him to go to the hardware store. I told my son I would be back shortly. I wanted to go drive by that first girl's house from a few years before this because I didn't know who this new woman was yet. As I was on the interstate, Kay was on the on-ramp and right behind me. It was perfect, and I eventually let him pass me so I could follow him. He had no idea I was following him, but he led me right to this new woman's house. I parked across the street and watched. As soon as he went into her house, I sprang. I went up to her door and knocked really loud. She had this crazy looking dude sitting outside her house and he asked if he could help me. I said, yes, I need to talk to Kay. He said, who? I said, the dude that just walked into the house with that bitch. He said he was there to do maintenance or something and that he worked for her landlord. I said, the fuck he does. That was my boyfriend and I need to speak to him now. Well, the chicken shit never came out, nor did he come home that night. And he barely made it home before we had to be at his parents for his birthday dinner. I was sick and I was panicking and crying nonstop. He had always told me he would never cheat and that he would end things first. He claims that he did end things with me by sending me that text the morning before. I said bullshit. That after 14, almost 15 years together, you don't break up through a text message. He had been telling me that he loved me and hoped for our future, but yet he was still talking to her. He was going over to her house and even took her and her two kids to the same place he took us, his family, for our first family vacation just two months prior. He spent the same amount of time with her there and everything that tore my soul to pieces. He kept this affair going for two months, all the while still living at home and telling me one day that he wanted to work it out with me. And then the very next day, he hated me and didn't love me anymore. He claims that they never had sex, but I don't believe him. He lied about everything. Why would he decide to start telling me the truth about that? I fought like hell for him because I loved him. He was my rock, my everything. I got into his phone a few more times and the things he said about me to her were so hurtful. The things he would tell her hurt me so bad. He called her his beautiful brown eyed girl and all kinds of shit like he used to say to me. He was straight up planning to leave me for her, except I don't think that she expected me to be such a pain in the ass and that I would fight for him the way I did. She got the hint that he was not on the market after he turned her down when she asked to borrow $50 to go to lunch, and she started backing off. She realized that he wasn't her next meal ticket, and then she told him that she was sorry for leading him on in any way other than friends. She was such a bitch to him, and she even claims that she took his virginity years earlier after they had been partying for a few days. He completely denies this, but I have had two other people that were there tell me this is exactly what happened. He has zero recollection of this, and I told him she raped him. He didn't think this was possible, but after I googled it and showed him that men can be raped too, he actually started to think that it was plausible that she really did this. Even grosser, in my opinion. I mean, really, who does that? When he decided that he wanted to work things out with me, I asked him to please message or call her to tell her it was over, but he refused. He also didn't block her until I told him I was done, that I won't be disrespected this way. So he blocked her on his phone, but nothing else. But I found him liking her posts on Facebook still. And so I told him I was done. 
At that point, he blocked her on most everything that I know of, but I'm still not trusting him. I've looked through his phone a few times and have discovered that he was searching for her in porn videos, like searching her name on porn sites. I feel as though he was obsessed with her. All these things has made me feel so unattractive and fat, and my self-esteem is so low it's crazy. I told him that I needed to hear him tell me the things he used to say to me and the things he was saying to her. He managed to tell me one day after I got all dressed up and looking good. His exact words were, you look nice today. Like, what the fuck? That's something you tell your mom or grandma, not your girlfriend. He's completely broken me. We are still together and we are working on our relationship and he is doing pretty much everything he needs to. But I gave him one year from his birthday to figure out if he wants to marry me or not because I do want to get married one day. I'm not getting any younger and I think 15 years is plenty of time to know if he wants to marry me or not. So in conclusion, I have been through so much with this man. I love him more than I have ever loved anyone else despite all the shit we've put each other through. I just hope that he will choose to marry me when the year is up, but I am prepared to move on if he chooses not to. I do regret every day having an affair. It was the most selfish, evil, hurtful thing I could have ever done. It hurt not just him, but my kids, me, and it stole many years of our lives even after it was over. My affair partner was killed in a car accident a few years ago, so at least he has that. I still live in the same city as his affair partner, and we still have mutual friends of hers, so I haven't been able to escape or truly have the closure I need. The amount of work it takes to even start the healing process is so painful and so hard, but I certainly hope it's worth it. If any of you ladies are thinking of having an affair, please don't. Please don't bring that pain to your partner, even if they have been unfaithful in your relationship. Revenge affairs are not right. They certainly don't make things better, and the grass is never greener on the other side. If you're not happy, then please end the relationship. Don't step out on it. Shortly before I began recording this episode, I contacted Jay just to give her an update that I was preparing to record and the day it would be released, but I wanted to find out where things were at this point. So I wanted to share her response. Yeah, we are doing great. We are actually getting married on September 11th of this year, 2022. I gave him an ultimatum last year when we decided to try again after his affair and that he had one year to decide if he wanted to marry me or not because 15 years is plenty of time to know in my opinion. And before that year was up, he told me he wanted to marry me. So we picked a date and we are actually sending out the invites as I am typing this. So things are good. We have both learned a lot and have also both really hurt each other, but we are also stronger than ever and love each other deeper and more purely than before. I am definitely happier today than I have been in a while. And that is wonderful news. I am so happy to hear that you guys were able to both come so far over all these years of back and forth with the pain and the heartache and you know it is said that couples that survive affairs come out stronger than they were before during the healing process they learn a lot about each other what each person needs more than maybe the other one thought etc and I'm learning this through all my training because I'm still dragging my feet I'm slowly becoming certified here but with everything happening I just haven't had a chance to complete it, but I promise I will. But I am learning a lot that I'm able to bring to this uh, podcast and help others. But, you know, people change over years. Their needs may change. And the fact that you guys were able to work together to see this and move forward 
is great, especially you can feel it. And I think you're pretty dead on, you know, you know, when something's up, a lot of women do and a lot of men do. A lot of people just have that sixth sense almost that there's something going on. And so I think the way you know him, he would know, or excuse me, you would know if he was up to no good. And One thing that I do appreciate you saying here, Jay, is the advice that it's not worth it. And you're able to see how much destruction it can cause when you have an affair. And though some of us sometimes will be vulnerable at that certain moment, we will be caught in a situation where we're really struggling with ourselves or our marriage and somebody just hits us right at that time and spot and we're sucked in but for you to be able to realize that even while you were messing around it made you sick because you knew in your heart it was the wrong thing to do and you're right revenge is never (laughs) revenge affairs they don't work out you know I know it's what eye for an eye but really two wrongs don't make a right kind of a thing. So I appreciate so much your full story with everything. I wish you nothing but happiness. I'm excited to see how the wedding goes. Send me pictures and I so excited to see all the kids all dressed up and you just beautiful in your gown and having the life you deserve. Just happiness. Thank you so much again and take care. On Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity, I share stories of women who have been unfaithful to their spouse or partner. I give them a safe space to be able to explain what happened and why they chose the direction of infidelity. I also feel it is just as important to understand what the betrayed husband or partner faced when they uncovered the truth. My plan was to bluff. I was going to tell her that the jig was up and that I had hired a private detective and had 100% proof that she was having an affair, even though I really didn't have proof, but I was at my end. So we got there. I sprung it on her and at that point she finally caved and admitted it. I could feel my face turning beet red. I was shocked, but not really. I took a moment before I asked her if she had been having sex with him. She said, yes. I flipped out. I was horrified. I was grossed out because we were having sex up until the day she tricked me into leaving the house. The counselor was freaking out because I lost my mind. Karen left, but the counselor said I couldn't leave in my current state of mind. So she called my dad to come get me. I said fuck that and pushed past the counselor and out the door I went. To hear bonus stories of the men's discovery of female infidelity in their relationship and have early access to regular episodes ad-free, subscribe to my Patreon by visiting my website, rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com. Subscription pledges start as low as $3 a month. Thank you for listening to Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity. Your support of the podcast is truly appreciated. Be sure to visit my website at rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com. There, you will find story guides to help form your story, where you can subscribe to Patreon, and an opportunity to vote for the podcast to be in the Hot 50 Countdown for Podcast Magazine. To submit your story, share feedback about the show, or if you have a Let's Ponder suggestion, please email it to rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com or mail to Rebecca Adams, P.O. Box 821064, Vancouver, Washington, 98682. Each story is taken into careful consideration, read without judgment, and always anonymous. Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity is written, produced, and edited by me, Rebecca Adams. If you enjoy this podcast, please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Be kind to one another, be kind to yourself, and always remember, no judgment. Goodbye. Goodbye.